Guys, last week it looked like we were taking a pause on this PSA 10 Premium specifically for Jordan cards, for 90s cards, and I was like, you know what, let's keep an eye on this. Maybe it's run too, too much too fast. Well, you could throw any theory about that out the window. This is Fanatics Weekly Auction number 143. We're going to look at the top 48 cards, and I am going to be ringing the hell out of this cowbell. Wait until you get to the top row. Three Jordan cards. Three all-time records shattered. A lot of stuff to discuss. We're going to look at star Jordan stuff. We're going to look at Jordan 90 stuff. Uh, one of my very good friends in the hobby, his initials are DJ, decided to let a lot of his very, very rare BGS 9.5 Jim Mint Jordan 90 stuff go in this auction. And from what I can see, they did huge numbers impossible cards to comp. We're talking about cards with single digit pops that just never sell. There's a lot to look at in this one. We got some Kobe cards that did well. We got some Kobe cards that eh, not so much. You're going to enjoy the video. 48 cards. We'll look at the top 48. Fanatics weekly auction number 143. This is how you want to get your week started, guys. If you've got a bunch of unwanted inventory that you've been sitting on for days, weeks, months, years, ship it to Fanatics Marketplace and let them do all the work. Just make sure when you ship it, you use the promotional code CAJUN, all capital letters, C-A-J-U-N. Hey guys, Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. Again, like you saw in the intro, if you're ever going to submit cards and you want to break records and ring the heck out of this bell on Fanatics Weekly Auctions, please remember to use the promo code CAJUN. Funny story, I ran into a guy at a local uh, hobby VIP event. Yeah, I'm, I'm a VIP here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, in the hobby at least. So uh, <clears throat> I ran into a guy who I'd never met in my life. He's like, that's funny. I'm glad we got to meet in person. I just submitted three cards to the Fanatics Weekly Auction. And when I got to the checkout, it said promo code. And I remembered I used Cajun. And so I gave him a hug. Everybody laughed. It was a very funny moment. And uh, I got to meet another friend in the hobby this week in my own city in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which doesn't happen very often. So funny little moment there. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's go. Top 48 cards. As I mentioned, lots of Jordan flavor. Lots of Jordan flavor. A very good friend of mine uh, put a bunch of... <coughs> Super rare BGS 9.5 Jordans in here. And this BGS 9 Ultra Platinum Medallion was also his. That's a very high grade for that card. It does $4,800 in a BGS 9 slab. That is a card that's often fake. This is an actual authentic copy of that card. We got the 2005 Finest Kobe Bryant Gold Refractor. These are serial number to 39. I don't know why. Somebody in the comments let me know how they chose the number 39. It makes no sense at all. Uh, but this is 2005 Gold Finest. It's a pop 10 card. It did $4,920. we are going to look it up on Card Ladder, which is an affiliate partner of the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel, three good friends of mine in the data platform of choice that I use. If you are going to sign up for a card ladder subscription, consider using the promo code Cajun for that as well. I highly recommend it. It's what I use. Every time I screen share, I'm showing you my card ladder data pricing tool at work. Uh, but there's the card. This is the card that sold last night. You know, it's number 210, cert number. Um, this card <coughs> is down again. Um, <coughs> Kobe cards have been going up. Kobe cards have been going down. I still don't really know. It's very scattershot. I'll see stuff on Instagram uh, from people saying, Kobe cards are running, and I'm like, I'm not really seeing that. I know some cards go up, some cards go down. I'm not seeing any consistent patterns in certain Kobe cards. You guys, I'm not an expert on the Kobe market, but you guys see what I see on Fridays on the alt weekly auction recaps, on Mondays on these Fanatics auction recaps. I see Kobe all over the place. Again, this is a card that at one point was an $8,600 card. $8,600, $7,200, $4,100, back to $5,400, substantiated at $5,500, and here we are a few months later back down to $4,900. So uh, looks like it's sort of steadying out somewhere between five and $5,500. We got a really uh, off-center Wilt Chamberlain PSA 6 that does $4,920. Of course, 61 Fleer, one of the greatest vintage card sets of all time, and that's Wilt's rookie right there. We've got some kind of weird Victor Wimanyama. I'm a 5,040. Uh, that is Topps Chrome. God, that's what Topps Chrome looks like. It looks like mosaic to me. Uh, we got a Jordan. Here it is. This is the beginning of some of the craziest BGS 9.5s you've ever seen. And I'm going to read you the pop on each one because it's nuts. Some of the cards that my friend DJ put into this auction. 1992 Fleer All-Stars Michael Jordan BGS 9.5. Good luck finding a 10. Good luck having enough money to buy a 10. 
Watch this premium. This is a pop three card. It sold for 5,040. There is a copy of a BGS 9.5. Again, did you hear what I said? It's a pop three. There's 11 PSA 10s, and this is a card that's been graded almost 17, over 1,700 times. So not a rare insert. Easy pack odds. The problem is grading the card a 10, and the reason is it's got four what are supposed to be in the, you know, borders of the exact same thickness, so you've got to start with the centering issue, but then the issue is the chipping on the edges and the corners. It's all dark color, so it shows all the white. Look at the gem rates, 0 0.87, 0 0.86 respectively. You're not getting gems if you're grading this card today in BGS or in PSA, and what does that do? That causes a premium. So this one last night sold for 5,040 bucks. Look what the last PSA 10 sold for though guys this is the bgs 9.5 over the last year you've only seen one like we said it's a pop three but look at the psa 10 that's three consistent sales 14 670 14 14,850, and then last night, this BGS 9.5 sells for five. Is that a good sale? Is that a bad sale? Were you expecting more? That is a, just a little bit more, uh, a little bit better than a three to one ratio. So tuck that away. We're gonna look at a lot of BGS 9.5s that are so rare, we can't comp them with other BGS 9.5s. So the only option out there is to compare it to the PSA 10. Of course, you can compare it to the PSA 9s as well. Uh, but that is uh, card number two there. And here we go. We're gonna do the same exact exercise here. What what is it? It's an early year, 1992, Jordan Fleer team leader, Michael Jordan, BGS 9.5 with a men gym. It's a pop four. So like the all-star, this is a pop four, 5160 for this card right here. There's your card, pop four. What are we going to compare it to? Nothing in the last year has ever sold. So all we can do, compare it to a 10. Now look at this comparison. This is actually a really, really high sale for the BGS 9.5, in my personal opinion, because if you compare this to the All-Star, that was a 3 to 1 ratio. This is a much better than a 3 to 1 ratio as far as how much the BGS 9.5 sold for. The last PSA 10 sold for $7,500, which is a pretty big number. Uh, it was a $5,200 card, so somebody just bought the BGS 9.5 for almost the exact same price as the PSA 10 before last so uh, interesting sale there. I think that's a really high sale for that card and a really good sale for my buddy. Uh, next on the line, we got the 1997 Hoops Allen Iverson High Voltage 500. This 500 volts, these things are rare, man. That's why it's a pop two, even in a PSA 9, 5280. <coughs> Let's do our Jordan analysis again. It's an upper deck locker talk, an extremely easy card to find. You can go find this card for a few bucks, but finding it in a BGS 9.5 is a little different. Pop three, 5,280 for this card. Here it is right there. That's the card that sold last night. Here's your comps all time. Forever, ever, ever. There's only been six sales, and the last sale was $489. If we sort this by the highest price, we're looking at an all-time record. And by the way, I forgot to click the all-time record here, and I forgot to click the all-time record uh, right there. So there's ding, ding, ding. There's three Jordans, three records. Here's your locker talk. But what happens when we want to look at the premium between the 9.5 and the PSA 10. Let's see, 52.80 for the 9.5 last night. PSA 10 locker talk, 4,300. So not only is the BGS 9.5 a record for any BGS 9.5 locker talk that ever sold, it's the record for any locker talk that's ever sold, right? Because the highest ever before that was back in 2022 when it sold for 4,300. Again, let's look at the pops. There's 13 total gems out there for that card. It's been graded a little over 400 times or somewhere near 400 times. So three Jordan 9.5s, three Jordan records. A Victor Wimanyama Mosaic Micro, uh, whatever that is, it's a pop two. I'm assuming it's some kind of case hit of some sort. Uh, it sells for uh, $5,400 right there. We've got a 2014 Eminence from 2013. It's an all-star one Troy ounce silver Kobe Bryant auto with that gold Sharpie down there. Serial number to 10. That card does $5,000. $400 and oh my gosh, deja vu. Here we are again. Another Jordan card that is incredibly rare in BGS 9.5. <clears throat> this one we've got to look at a little bit closer. There's going to be two stories told here tonight with this card. This is the Quick Strike 9.5. You guys keep watching when we get near the top of this auction. Yes, near the top of the auction, you're going to see a PSA 10 copy that sells as well, which is very, very rare. The reason I zoomed in, which I don't do very often, is uh, it looked to me, and in fact, it's well, it's not just my opinion, 
The most common defect or problem with these quick strike cards is that this whole thing is like this hyper white foil. And look at these marks. It looks like a black pen was, you know, touched with a felt tip pen. That's not what that is. That is, uh, it is, it is white, whitish, bright whitish, silverish kind of opal foil, pearl foil on top of an acetate card, almost like it's a you're putting white uh, foil texture on top of a. Dunkin' Go Nuts or something like that, right? And so whenever that white foil chips, it looks like little black marks. And that's what those are, yet the card is a 9.5. Now, did those little marks come after the card was graded? Possibly, I don't know, but where did that little white foil go? Did it disintegrate? Maybe, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but it is a nine for surface, so maybe somebody looked at it and said, oh, that's close enough, we'll give it a nine. I'm not buying it. Again, uh, I am not here to make anybody feel bad about what cards they buy, but uh, again, you got to look at the card. I, nobody's a bigger grade snob than me. I like 9.5s and PSA 10s, but nobody's, you know, you got to look at the card for sure. So I've seen PSA 9s that look better. I mean, I know that that's cliche and we hear it all the time, but. Uh, there's a lot of gonna. There's gonna be a lot of times that we're gonna look at Jordan cards specifically uh, when they're graded, what they're graded, and look at the card itself. Anyway, 34 bids, $5,400 for that quick strike. I've got it pulled up right here. Same exercise. There's only 16 9.5s out there. The last two sales. Here you go. In the last year, it sold twice. 47.48. 5400 so that's a 13 percent jump if we want to look at that premium between a psa well i'm not going to give it away because the psa 10 sold in this auction so you can watch till the end and we'll see what the psa 10 sold for just remember our you know our ratios we're always trying to figure out what the hell is the 9.5 worth if a psa 10 is this and vice versa we've got one bgs 9.5 that sold higher than any psa 10 ever and then we got another 9.5 that we looked at earlier on the all-star that's worth about one third of the psa 10 so Weird stories being told in this auction so far. Stay with me here. I said, I apologize. Well, I don't apologize because it's glorious and delicious and succulent that most of the cards that we're going to talk about today are Jordans. So if you're an anti-Jordan person, I guess you should just stop watching. But we are going to talk about some other stuff like this Kobe. It's a 1997 Flair Showcase Legacy Collection, row zero. Serial number to 100, BGS 9.5, and it sells for $5,520. And here we go again, another Jordan BGS 9.5. Hey, look, it's not my problem that this guy put all of these incredibly low-pop, high-value BGS 9.5 Jordan 90s inserts into this auction. I'm going to talk about them if I see them. This is a Pop 8. It's the power and the key. It sold for $5,520. There is the card. Pop 8 right there. Again, what are we going to compare this to? Nothing, because the damn thing never sales, sells. If we go out to two years, there's your sales. Over two years, the card is up 130%. What is a PSA 10 worth? If the PSA, if the BGS 9.5 sold for 55.20, what do we expect the PSA 10 to be worth? 6,600. So this is where BGS 9.5 is eating up a big portion of that PSA 10. This is, but you know, it's up to 80% of the value of a PSA 10 or something like that. Quick math, sorry. 2022 Flawless Paolo, serial number to 25 um, <clears throat> from, from Panini Flawless. Sorry, this is his patch auto rookie, 5,640 for that encapsulated Flawless. Uh, guys, again, I want to remind you guys, if you're submitting cards that look like this Paolo Bancaro to Fanatics, this, these cards do not need to be authenticated with CGC. You don't pay to authenticate those cards. They don't take those out of the encased, you know, original, whatever you call that, I guess encased, the encased original with the flawless flap on there. They sell them as is in those uh, in those untampered with seals. These will not be reevaluated by CGC, and you won't see all the, the raw stuff that goes on there with the CGC uh, evaluation authentication process. So these cards sell just like that. Uh, 97 Metal Universe, Platinum Portraits, Garnet. This sold for about what we expected. You're going to have to trust me on that. It's a PSA 10, and it's a Pop 5. I wonder if it's a Garnet purchaser or a set collector. That's what you always wonder when you see these rare set pieces from 1997 Metal Universe. You know, we see a Jordan sell, we see a Kobe sell, we see a Shaq sell. You usually assume that's a set collector. You want, I mean, it's a PC collector, right? You wonder about this Garnet. Was this a set collector who was trying to complete the whole Platinum Portraits set in a PSA 10? If so... Big numbers right there, 5,760. Good sale for that card right there. Next on our list, we've got to do it. We've got to check out Wimby Blue Ice. Again, uh, <laughs> look, I I've said it before. I think Victor Wembanyama is going to be one of the greatest players that ever lived. So this is no slight to Victor Wembanyama. They're just printing too many. 
Uh, we seen the Mercury that came out. I was actually part of a little Mercury break this weekend to support a local card shop. It was exciting. It was exhilarating. And I got punched in the testicles. Uh, but here it is. This is the Blue Ice 2023 serial number two. I think 125. Yep. Uh, so 6,300, 8,100, 6,300, 6,000, uh, 6,600. You know, we've got to go. This is the lowest sale of the last five sales. Um, but again, it's not really enough to move the needle one way or another. It's not like it went down to 4,000 or something like that. So, uh, not a great sale right there, but again, what are you expecting? There's going to be a lot of Victor Wimanyama prism parallel options to choose from. Paolo Boncaro, serial number to 15 from Flawless, the 6,000. So another really good looking PAL card. And then I've always liked the look of this card. This is the 2003 SP Game Use Kobe. Look at the patch on this card. It's a great looking card. I'm going to click into this thing, even though this video is going to be like 10 hours long. I'm going to click in here because this card needs some attention. That is a great looking patch. <coughs> sort of an interesting geometric perfect square patch window there, which I kind of like. And this card is uh, serial number 250, and it sold last night, obviously, for $6,000, as you can see on your screen. Take it to .NET, Jordan, BGS 9.5. Did I tell you there was a BGS 9.5 Jordan 90s insert and parallel theme? Yeah, man, here it is. Let's look it up. There it is, one of Jordan's best. One of his easiest to attain serial number cards because it's serial number two, 1,000, but it's only pop 76 and a BGS 9.5. This card actually came down a bit. So unlike the other ones that we've seen that have broken all-time records, this one came down. Why do you think that is? I'll give you one guess. It starts with seven and ends with six. It's a pop 76 card. It's not a pop four. It's not a pop, a pop eight. It's not a pop seven. It's not a card where if you let it go, you won't see it again, okay? And so this is a card we will see. And as evidenced by over the last two years, it's sold nine times. So this is a card that's selling, you know, once every, um, you know, every two, three months, something like that. $6,000 sale is still up, guys, 42.86% over the last two years. So keep that in mind. We got a Halliburton True RPA, and there you can see now the authentication partner with Fanatics Weekly is CGC. So if you're sending cards in uh, and they're raw and you're trying to sell them in the weekly auctions, they will be authenticated by CGC. I think it's three bucks or something like that. Um, I'm trying to remember, I'm not sure. Right now it's a five day turnaround. I think they're looking and shooting for, it's a five day minimum, uh, I'm sorry, maximum turnaround if you're sending raw cards. And by the way, if you're submitting raw cards to sell in the Fanatics Weekly, which I think is, you know, it can be a great idea if you want to kind of build a war chest and go back after cards you want and you got a bunch of raw cards you don't necessarily love and you're just trying to compile a bunch of money. You know, when you're submitting raw cards to Fanatics Weekly, you could still use the promo code Cajun, C-A-J-U-N. They'll charge you three bucks and you got to pay now before. So you'll get a little $3 invoice. You'll pay your invoice. Boom, the card gets authenticated and you can move it into the weekly auction. And this is a great raw card here, right? I, I think he's probably I sprinkled some money on this kid for MVP because I just think he can put up eye-popping numbers he's got the ball in his hands so freaking much uh serial number to 99 does six thousand six hundred dollars Booker's True RPA. Yeah, again, his 2015 National Treasures True RPA is horizontal, which a lot of people don't like. Uh, but this one goes for 6,600. Which of these guys would you rather have? This is a 910. This is a raw. Who do you think ha is going to end up having the better career? Obviously, Booker's off to a huge head start. He's already been in the finals. He's made all NBA teams. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton uh, is a, probably a better looking card right here. Uh, but again, I don't know enough about National Treasures to see if this patch came from Walmart or if it came from his actual jersey that he wore in a game or something like that. So we could click it and look at the back, but I don't care enough. Uh, we got another Kobe, Flawless Transitions. Kobe, serial number to 25, PSA 10. That's a pop one card you're looking at right there. Kobe Collectors, 7,500 featuring Kobe in his USA uniform. A 2004 second year LeBron, baby, little baby circular patch window. Serial number to 50, this SP Game Use patch uh, auto goes for $7,800. And then as we talked about, Finest is all about arbitrary serial numbering. This one is a black X-Fractor serial number two to nine PSA nine. There's only two of them out there. There's only one PSA 10 and this card sold for $7,800. There's the card right there. Uh, the last time this card sold was the exact same card, same cert number guys. 5520. So this is a Kobe card that really jumped about 40%, something like that. That's quick math, right? It's up more than $2,000 from the last sale and it's the exact same card. And that was from January to here at October. What if we look at the highest price ever paid? Uh, oh my gosh, there you go. Highest price ever paid for a 2004 
finest Kobe Black serial number to nine. Now again, smoke and mirrors, right? Smoke and bells and mirrors. Smoke, cowbells, and mirrors. That should be the name of this one. Um, the PSA 10s obviously never sold. Well, we're going to assume the PSA 10s never sold. We can look it up. If the PSA 10 sold, it would sell for a hell of a lot more than that. There you go, because it's a pop one. So highest sale ever for a PSA 9, highest sale ever for any of the nine. Uh, BGS 9.5 Jordan, here it comes again. I'm lucky enough to own this exact card in this exact grade, the BGS 9.5 grade. This big men on court sold for, I, let's click in here because it doesn't get much better than this. No card really reeks of the 90s much more than this card. I mean, this is just really something. This area here, okay, is one of the ways, I'm not an expert on real fake, so don't be the guy that reaches out to me and says, Cajun, you talk about Jordan cards, you know if this is real or fake. Tell me if it's real or fake. You're never going to get me to say yes or no. I don't know. I suck at that. I'm terrible at that. I always tell the truth. I have no idea. I reach out to experts in the hobby to identify those cards that are oftentimes faked. The big man on court is, I think it's mostly the Z Pete that's faked, but uh, you can always tell because this area here, you see how it's flat? It almost goes like this and then it goes on a flat diagonal. If it's perfectly rounded, it's fake. Usually that's the case. Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but if that thing is perfectly rounded, see, and you can see on the back too, see how it's like a perfectly flat diagonal? That's how you identify a fake amongst other ways. Uh, <clears throat> this card sold for $7,800 last night on Fanatics Weekly 143. Is that good or bad? Well, let's check it out. And there it is, pop 46. It, it's up 20% over the last year, but it did come down a bit from the last sale, about 400 bucks down from the last sale over the last two years, guys. It's up 116.67%. Uh, what is the margin of this card to the PSA 10? What do you guys think? A BGS 9.5 is 7,800. What do you think a PSA 10 is? 5,500. It's a pop six. That's a little misleading. It sold, it sold in 2020. So I guess the question that now we need to ask is what the hell would this PSA 10 right here sell for if it came to market? So sorry, that was a, uh, a big buildup for uh, no answer whatsoever. 2018 Opulence NBA Finals LeBron patch serial number to arbitrary 16. That's a giant slab thing there in CGC authenticated that 8,100 for that thing. That's off to Beckett. No doubt about that. 2008 Topps Chrome X Fractor Kobe guarded by LeBron, serial number to 288. That PSA 10 sold for $8,100. And here we go again. This is my guy, Dave, selling another BGS 9.5. This is a quad gem exclamation points. It is a pop 13. It sold last night for $8,100. Here it is right there, pop 11. Uh, why did that thing say pop 13? Is it 11 or 13? It looks like pop 11 to me. There's only eight PSA 10s. The PSA 10 looks about a $23,000 card. This one sold for 8,000. It's only sold once over the last year. What about all time? Is it a record? High price ever, 8,100. Another Jordan record broken. This is the BGS 9.5 exclamation points. This is a card that you will see prominently featured in the Cajun Cardboard Michael Jordan hierarchy. Posters are still available. I still get messages from people saying, what the hell is a hierarchy? What are you talking about tier one, tier two, tier three? Cajun, what are you even talking about? If you want to know more, go to the playlist on this very YouTube channel and just click Cajun Cardboard's Michael Jordan hierarchy and start watching. I bring some of the smartest people in the hobby onto the channel to talk about Michael Jordan cards so you guys don't have to do too much thinking for yourself. It's a great logical starting point if you're starting for the first time to attack Michael Jordan card collecting from the 90s. It's not every Michael Jordan card. It's not every Michael Jordan card. It's not going to have all the star cards in there. It's not going to have all the base cards in there. It's not going to have autographs in there. It's not going to have international in there. It's not going to have memorabilia cards in there. Why? Not because they're not the greatest things in the world. All the Michael Jordan cards are great. All the star cards are freaking incredible, right? We're not talking about particular types of cards. I had to narrow the project. So it's primarily 90s inserts and parallels with a few exceptions. All right, speaking of star, 1984 star, number 288. This is one of Jordan's uh, 1984 original year star cards. This is a PSA 6 copy, and this uh, card sold for $8,100. Is that good? Is that bad? Uh, that is uh, not surprisingly down. So the star cards started to go bananas. 
Uh, let's see, 10,000, when did this start? Yeah, about here. Okay, so here's where it started. 4,900, 6,000, 8,700, 10,500, 9,500. Everybody said star cards were going to the moon forever. These are different. These are not like other sports cards. These cards will never go down. They're always going to go up. 10,000, 12,000, 13,500, the peak of the mania, back to 10 back to 8,100 last night. So uh, that is $5,000 down. That is about 40% down, whatever, something like that, from September 5th, which was one month ago. Um, my guess is it's gonna go down from 8,100. I guess we'll have to wait and see on future videos. Again, no slight to the card. It's too much too fast. And you could say that about some of these cards, too much too fast. The difference is uh, the card that we just looked at, the star card, has sold 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24 times in this calendar year. That's the difference between this and the BGS 8 9.5 cards that we're ringing bells on, is that we don't know what the 9.5s are worth. Why? They don't come to market. But the Star PSA 6 is a pop 101 card. And so that's why it's a little bit different. You can't even compare this PSA 6 star card to a PSA 9 copy of this card or a PSA 8 copy of this card. Again, pop matters. It's a lot of cards. There's 101 of them out there. There's 11 BGS 9.5 exclamation points. All right, so this is going to be a little bit more of an apples to apples comparison. This is a BGS 9.5 copy of the Scoring Kings. And I know it's funny, but this BGS 9.5 copy is a little special. It's got a 10 for the centering and all 9.5. So you're looking at a Gem Plus copy right here, and we've got it pulled up. There it is right there. One of Jordan's most recognizable, most sought after inserts. I call it a foundational insert along with the 1992 Bean Team. If someone said, hey, where do I start, Cajun? If I want to buy some inserts from the 90s, where do I start? I say, look at the Scoring Kings. Look at the Bean Team. Look at whatever you want. Pick the one you like the most. I mean, pick whichever one you think looks the coolest, right? But uh, these are two foundational pieces, that and the Bean Team. 105 pop, so about the same as that star PSA 6. The difference is this one's up 84% over the last one year. What about over the last two years? Uh, that is really, really high. What about all time? Am I ringing a bell on this shit? Okay, no. I'm not. Okay. So second highest price ever paid for a BGS 9.5 uh, scoring Kings, 8,400. The all-time record, not surprisingly, was set in the year 2021 for $9,500. That's not a rare card, guys. Again, is it a delicious card? Yes, of course. Just like that star card was. It's a delicious card. It's a meaningful card. It's a card that all of us want to have in our collection, but it's not the highest. Uh, it's not the rarest card in the world. There's over 200 gem copies of this card. Uh, but again, look at that ratio. The 10 has dropped all the way down to about a $13,000 card, and this is 8,400. So not even a two to one ratio on the Scoring Kings card. But again, let's remember, that's a card that's been graded 4,300 times. So I'd be a little bit cautious with this sale right here. Again, superlative subgrades. So it throws a wrench in there, puts a little asterisk on it, but that is a really big jump for half of a subgrade You know, from the last sale of what? 5,400 to 8,400? I'm going to exercise caution on that. I don't suspect the next Scoring Kings is going to sell for $8,000. Let's just put it that way. In fact, I would bet my lunch money on that. Uh, next, weird, LeBron James. We're going to talk about a LeBron James card. And ironically, I think I've got one of these at auction coming up in Fanatics Weekly. Guys, if you're a LeBron James collector and you want to buy at the floor, I put a bunch... I, I'll just tell you, I, I decided to do a 180. I put my entire LeBron James collection in the next three Fanatics Weekly auctions. So all of my LeBron James cards are in the next three Fanatics Weekly auctions. Do I hate LeBron James? No. Do I think LeBron James is trash? No. Do I think LeBron James uh, might have been at a Diddy party? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, actually, I think we know he was, but I don't think he was in the room with the goats and stuff. Uh, but this 2003 LeBron James tops. Uh, anyway, I was getting out of LeBron James. I didn't finish. Out of LeBron James to buy more into Michael Jordan. Obviously, I ain't buying into 9.5s because I can't afford it because I lost every freaking auction last night. But I'm going to get out of LeBron and just push harder into Jordan. I decided to do a U-turn. Like I said, anytime I make a change in my collection, I think it's 
you know, imper uh, imperative that I share that information with you so you guys always know the perspective that I'm coming from, right? I don't hide my love for Michael Jordan cards, so when I talk glowingly about Michael Jordan cards, uh, you guys know why. I am the first one to tell you I'm very subjective. And so when I do review recaps and I talk about the sales of LeBron James cards, I want you guys to know that I decided to get out of my entire LeBron James collection at the bottom, of course, and so uh, it's probably a good LeBron James buying time. I decided to sell because I'm in this thing for the long term. I'm in the hobby for the long term and Jordan's what I care about and I don't care about those LeBron James cards. Will I buy a LeBron James card in the future? It's quite possible but it might be a different type of LeBron James card. So some big LeBron cards, some early year prism gems, uh, a 2003 Black Refractor BGS 9.5 Monster, which is something that you guys may want to look at. Just remember, if you're buying cards in Fanatics Weekly Auction, including mine, thank you for buying the LeBrons in advance, you can use the affiliate link that's located in the YouTube description to this video. Anyway, this two, <laughs> sorry, I'm paying bills. This 2003 Topps LeBron James First edition parallel is somewhere in my uh, in the madness. Here it is, right there. This astonished me, and it's great timing for yours truly. I can't believe this, guys. I don't know what's going on. This is a card that's up a hundred percent over the last year. Now, what is it all time? That tells a little bit of a different story. So LeBron James charts don't look like Michael Jordan's cart charts, but a lot of people think they will over time. We've had those discussions. I've done videos on that. I've had people on the channel that think LeBron James is the GOAT, right? And so a lot of people think <clears throat> LeBron James cards, like Michael Jordan cards, are going to come back to 2021 prices at some point and maybe even exceed 2021 prices like we're seeing on some of these Michael Jordan cards. Well, for that to happen, this card would need to sell for $50,000. Right now, it's an $8,700 and we're doing freaking cartwheels talking about it, right? Over the last two years, it looks like it's made up all that ground that it caught, that it lost. Wouldn't it have been nice to jump in on this card at $3,854? So that's an interesting result there. That's a huge, super, super high uh, comp right there. I mean, let's just go back over the last one year and see that card's up. Yeah, it's almost double guys. So three consecutive upward sales, including last night's, which was a monster sale right there. So congrats to that seller. Uh, SGC <coughs> 8.5 Jordan rookie does 8,700. And then a yellow Dunkin' Go Nuts. I'm sorry if I offend somebody who was consigning and selling this card, especially if you use the promo code Cajun, but it is yellow. So I have to point that out. It sold for $9,000. This of course is his Dunkin' Go Nuts PSA 10. There it is right there with the black background. It's a pop 63, uh, like Jordan in the garden against the uh, Celtics in his second year. Second year? I think second year. Uh, this one did 9,000 last night, which is actually a really good sale. 72, 74, all the way up to 9,000. Uh, JoJo, VTV Sports Cards recently sold an incredibly crystal clear copy for significantly more than $9,000, significantly more than $9,000. I don't recall the exact number, but I'm sure it was I'm, I'm, it was well into the five figures. Uh, but this Pop 63 is trying to get back to that 10000 So this is a card you could actually pick up. It's a PSA 10 that is not double where it was a year ago. This is actually less than where it was a year ago. What about the two-year trend? Well, two years up 36%. So uh, again, slow and steady to the right. I'll take that all day long. Oh, we get another star card. We get another 1984 star card. We didn't see any star 101s in this auction. I don't know if it's because Golden sold every one that existed or if because the trend is coming down a little bit, but this one is a different one. This is a 1984 star and a PSA 7 is very different than a PSA 6. Uh, when it comes to 1984 star, this is the 195 gold medalist and this card sold for $9,000 and there's your card right there. The PSA seven card sold for nine last night. That is exactly on the number and it's actually up above where it was uh, nine days ago. But again, I do want to caution you. This is a lot of sales and this is what I predicted would happen. I don't think the star cards got worse. I just predicted, and this is no different, and this is why I think we might see something happen with Jordan uh, inserts in PSA 10. We're not seeing it yet, but I'm thinking it's possible is that if they continue to come to the market too much, it will suppress the prices and they'll start to retreat a little bit. And that's what we're seeing here with this card. Uh, because, well, it's not retreating. It just stopped. It just halted, right? Um, you know, well, it did retreat. So 12,500, 
14,000 in September, 14,000 in September, down pretty drastically to 10,008, down really drastically to 8,500. And then I think we're deciding 9,000 is the number. We got to look at the pop report to make more sense out of it. 64 is a lot. So 64 is a good chunk and it's going to be 100, 100 plus, right? In a couple of years. We know that because there's a lot more of those out there. And then we've got a lot of BGS options as well. So um, that's part of the deal. It's just not as rare as you think it is. And so uh, again, it's hard to compare star cards to uh, to inserts and parallels when you know the pops 12 versus 64. It's just a whole different deal, you know. Uh, it's like comparing gold to red serial number to 299 or um, black serial number to 10 to Mojo's. It's just it's tough, right? So there's a lot to it. Um, but uh, again, one of uh, one of Jordan's big time cards from 1984 star. Um, looks like it's holding steady. That's a good. That's good news right there. So 2019 Prism Gold Luca serial number to 10 BGS 10. That's a pop one. That's a ten thousand dollar card. Um, right next to that, we've got the flashback thing. Uh, 2020 Prism flashback. Now we're gonna have flashbacks, decas, and 2012s, and nobody's gonna know what the hell is what because they all look relatively similar. Luckily, LeBron's in a Lakers uniform here, so we know that it's not the 2012. This is the flashback, and this uh, BGS9 sells for $10,200. We've got uh, a tr National Treasures Logo Man patch serial numbered to five. This is not an autograph, it's just a patch, and this Paolo does 10,800. And then we've got a top certified Kobe Auto serial numbered to nothing. Uh, is this a, I don't even know anything about this card. Somebody's got to explain this to me. It's pop two. Is this a, like an in-person, uh, normal card that was autographed by Kobe or is this pack pulled autograph? Um, I think this is an in-person deal. So I think somebody got this autograph. That's a lot of bids. Holy crap. 80 bids pushed this card all the way up to, uh, 13,200 and it is a pop two in a 10, 10 slab. Jalen Brunson's gold parallel RPA sells for fifteen thousand six hundred. So big believer in Jalen Brunson picking this one up for fifteen thousand six hundred is a PSA nine, which is a good grade for National Treasures because those things are tough to grade. Ten for the autograph. Jalen Brunson, uh, man, that Knicks team is a problem. Man, losing Dante is going to be something, but you're replacing him with a you know a former All NBA center and an All Star center in Carl Anthony Towns. That team is talented and primed, and that starting five is nasty, nasty on the defensive end, notwithstanding Carl Anthony Towns. What about this Jordan 97 hoops high voltage? But this is not the normal high voltage, right? This is not the card you're going to see a little bit lower down in the Cajun cardboard hierarchy. This is the high voltage 500. This is a big boy card. This is a big boy grade, guys. This is a BGS 9. You can see that cracked ice pattern in the background. That's how you can tell the difference. It's serial number to 500, but this is a pop 13 with only three higher graded. This card sold for $15,600 last night. That doesn't strike me as all that outrageous. There's your sale last night. It sold one time in the last year. It sold three times in the last two years, and it is steady at 8.33%. Uh, what is the highest sale of this card all time? Well, what do you know? We're going to ring that cowbell. More cowbell, please. Pop 13, all-time record, shattered last night. Congrats to the seller on that card. And a uh, big-time sale right there. I've owned that card in a blue-collar, measly 8.5 grade. Uh, next to that, we've got a Giannis autograph uh, from 2013. This card is a Pop 2, and it sold for 17400 In 2021... This Giannis autograph 1010 would have sold for $800 billion. <laughs> now it's a $17,400 card. Not that that's not a lot of money, but honest to God, this would have been probably a sixty-five dollars or $70,000 card in 2021. 1999, a Project Master Collection, Michael Jordan, uh, hand serial numbered autograph PSA 10 sells for $17,400 as well. And here we are, guys, moving our way up to the top. I think this is row two. I'm not sure. We got two PSA 9s on here. And by the way, Windstar went off to the races. A lot of people out there who have been in the hobby a long time said, you know what? Watch what's going to happen. The star card went up too much too fast. It's going to start to come back a little bit. Find a new floor, which will be higher than the prior floor. And then it'll start to be steady and people will digest it and it will find a saturation point. And then those star cards, like every Michael Jordan card, will start a gradual up into the right decline. We're still finding where that star card belongs. And I say that star card, I mean all star cards. We're finding the correct price point. The market will dictate 
what those cards are worth in each individual grade. The 86 Fleer is a little bit easier because there's only one of them and there's 25 star cards, right? And again, we're comparing apples to oranges here because the star card is more rare than the 86 Fleer, but I knew what would happen is when the star card started to come back, the 86 Fleer would start to move a little bit and those people that believe that this is the true rookie card would start to buy it. Well, we've got two sales last night of $21,600. Again, not the rarest card in the world. This is a pop 3,000 card, but two great sales on Fanatics last night. We had an eBay sale last night of 19,000. We had an eBay sale of 17,000. And then we had two sales on Fanatics of over 21,000, 21,000 and 21,600. So keep that in mind when we look at this graph. If we go back up here, 21,000, right now it says the highest price is 20,400. Well, how in the hell is that possible? We know that can't be right because we just watched two of them sell for 21,000 and 21,600. Well, it's because Card Ladder merges those four sales. So it averages in the two eBay sales to uh, you know the two Fanatic sales and it comes out with an average of 20,400. If you throw out that and you don't screw around with that, this sale last night, those two sales are the highest sale of the 86 Fleer PSA 9 over the last three months. And again, 36 sales. It's hard for these cards to go up or down because there's so many of them. It's not rare at all. Over the last year, the card's been as high as 25,000. It just depends on the card and the grade and how it looks. So two really, really good sales is what I'm getting at last night for the 86 Fleer PSA 9 on Fanatics. And then two, as we expected, sales on eBay of 17,000, 19,000. This is a small sample size, but this would indicate to me Maybe Fanatics Weekly is a good place to sell your Michael Jordan cards. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Uh, it's worth a shot. Here we go. I promised you three Jordan cards on the top row. I promised you three cowbell rings on the top row, and I'm about to deliver, but we got to talk a little bit about some of these cards. The first one we're going to click in here. This card needs some discussion, and no offense to the seller, no offense to the buyer who bought it. This PSA 10 has got some issues, and it's got, well, one primary issue. I'm going to click in, and we'll look at it. A lot of people noticed this right away. It was the first thing that I noticed when I looked at the card. That is not a border up there. That is not supposed to be there. That's a discoloration. That is a print line of some sorts. I'm not some print technology wizard, but that's the first thing that I noticed on the card, and I don't think it's just a bad picture. I think that's on the card, yet the card is a PSA 10. Now, we looked at the BGS 9.5, and do you remember the black flex or the black dots that it looked like where the foil was missing. I don't see any foil missing on this card, but what I do see is a big, fat, juicy, throw it on the table refractor line going across the top of this card about 10% down from the top. That didn't matter uh, because this card last night sold for $23,400, which is going to be an all-time record by quite some margin. The highest Record before this was $9,100, and this card jumped to $23,400. Uh, if we compare over the last two years, it is up 280.49%. People accuse me of being biased towards inserts and parallels. First of all, I'll say I am very biased towards inserts and parallels because they're the greatest cards ever made. But I will also tell you that I am a truth teller. That sh stuff is crazy. This sale is crazy. That's too much for this card. It's a pop 19 card, which doesn't mean it's like the most overly printed card in the world. But if there's a pop 19 of them out there, you're going to see another one at some point in the next two years. And it's not going to have a refractor line. And this 23,400, I don't know, man. That, I hate if that's the base. If a non-refractor version comes along, what's it going to be worth? 40? I don't freaking know. I mean, it's a good Michael Jordan insert. It's an important Michael Jordan insert. Look, I'm going to click on the pop report and show you. There's not that many of them out there. But guys, there's 500. There's 500 of them out there, so it's not the rarest card in the world. It's not the most impossible pack odds. It has a single-digit gem rate, a combined gem rate of 6.55%, but there's 35 gems out there. 23,400 for a PSA 10. The BGS 9.5 sold. We saw for 5,400 in this auction, and that was a very high sale. So I would be very cautious. This is a card that I do not own, but I need to pick up. So what I'm looking for, I would be looking for a PSA 8 or a PSA 9, with as good a surface as I could find. I could deal with centering a little bit because there's no border being off a little bit, but I'm looking for a PSA 9 um, uh, or a PSA 8 even that does not have a lot of missing foil. That's where I'm going to be. Why? Because a PSA 9 is about a $1,400 card, and $1,400 was the highest sale of the last 26 sales over the last two years. So you might even be able to pick this thing up for 1000 bucks. So 
I don't know, man. I ain't paying 23X a PSA 9 for a PSA 10 with a refractor line. That's just my take. I hope I didn't offend somebody who watches the channel, who bought the card. Again, PSA 10 is PSA 10 in some people's books. And I think people saw the 10 on there and they were like, we're going to get this card one way or the other. Same story here, except there's no refractor line. And <laughs> this is a tough one. Old PSA 10 label, 1996 Skybox Z4 Slam Cam. Guys, remember, there's two Slam Cams. One of them is a big, big boy card with really impossible pack odds. You're looking at it. One of them is not quite so hard to pick up and, uh, and a little, little significantly more affordable. This one sold for $25,800 last night. The 1996 Skybox Z4 Slam Cam. It's a pop 17, so about the same pop as that quick strike that we just looked at. Look at this chart. That's the all-time chart. More cowbell, please. Uh, jumped all the way from 12,000 to 25,000. So here we are again, having the same conversation we just had. Why is a car doubling in value from October 19th a year ago? In one year, the card's going to double in value? I don't know. I think people are pushing too hard on PSA 10s right now and it just worries me how many bids did this card get that's something we want to look at 50 bids um so that's a huge jump guys I mean that is a really really big jump but it is a cowbell on both of those I don't suspect we'll be ringing the cowbell the next time those PSA 10s come to market maybe we will maybe I'm wrong I don't know I would just be very cautious when two cards go up that much, that fast in one sale in such short succession. And then the winner is a card I don't know much about, but we got to look in here. It is a pop one. There are none graded higher. It's a Min Jim with a 10 autograph, Michael Jordan, hand serial numbered 10 out of 10. And Jordan was a 10 out of 10, by the way. Uh, and great looking autograph here. Again, not an autograph expert, but I don't see any streaking. I don't see the autograph disappearing. Maybe a little bit right there if you get in really close. Um, but that's one of the things that scares me about autographs is why, how do I know this autograph is going to look like this, you know, five years, 10 years, 12 years from now? It could turn black or it could be missing a bunch of the ink. I, I don't know. I guess you need to put it in a humidor or put it in the freezer, or, you know, Put it in your pocket. I don't know what you're supposed to do to preserve autographs. Somebody else can talk about that. But by the way, did you see the number of bids? You know what I'm thinking. 69 bids, $31,200 for this Jordan Upper Deck Finite Signatures Gold Parallel. It's just a really good looking card. $31,200. Uh, we're going to look it up. It's a pop one, so we're just going to look it up without any grade at all. And you'll notice that that is not just a record. That is a record by quite some margin of more than $13,000 so far and away. And by the way, this was 2021 Mania when the card sold uh, for 17888 Here we are in 2024 thinking we'll never get back to bubble 2021. That's why it's called a bubble. We'll never get back to 2021 prices. Well, we're watching cards obliterate 2021 prices, right? And so, uh, again, I can't predict the future, but... There was a lot of cowbell in this episode. Am I crazy? Let's look at our top 10 like we always do before I sign off. Jordan, 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 Giannis, Jordan, and then Jalen Brunson sneaks in there at number 10. So let me know what you guys think. Am I wrong on those top three cards? Obviously, the autograph, you just never see it, and it's the highest grade achievable, so big, big deal there. 31,000 is a big number. Congrats to the buyer. Congrats to the seller. Uh, the quick strike and the slam cam need some discussion. The star cards need some discussion. We need more data. We need more time. We need more uh, information to really come to a conclusion on what those cards are doing. Um, but again, uh, like as a collector, you know, you just want to put the cards in your collection. I like that high voltage 500 uh, breaking an all time record. I like people buying Giannis at the bottom. Uh, I like people buying LeBron James, what we thought was at the bottom, but then we see this first edition do a huge number. It really surprises me. Again, not a 2021 number, which was 48,000, but a huge number nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Guys, stay, pay attention. I've started to do preview videos for a couple of different uh, um, consigners. Uh, Acquire, I'm doing preview videos uh, for some of their cards when they end in these weekly auctions on a weekly basis. They'll reach out to me and they'll say, hey, do a preview video on our cards. So you may catch those. One thing you can count on with this channel, let me just put it in a nutshell. Monday mornings, you're going to get this weekly auction recap. You're usually going to get another Monday evening video. Not always, but usually. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I do crazy stuff. I do whatever I feel like doing. These are gonna be unique, spontaneous. You'll see collector spotlight videos where I bring, bring people on the channel, other collectors. Sometimes they're huge collectors. Sometimes they're very, very small collectors, but they have an interesting story to tell and I bring them on the channel. By the way, the greatest Michael Jordan card collector in the history of this hobby, and no, his name is not Nat Turner, is coming, you know, already came on the channel, already recorded. It's coming up in the next week or two. So you definitely want to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. This guy was at the peak of Jordan card collecting when he retired from the game in 2013. We're going to tell his story. He's going to tell his story on this channel, how he got out of cards into cars. Yes, from cards. Jordan cards to cars, no D, right? So he's going to tell his story. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is Collector Spotlight, usually once a week, and then a bunch of other great videos. Friday mornings, you're going to get the uh, Alt Weekly Review Preview, where we review the Alt Weekly Auction sale results on Thursday, and we preview the next weekly auction cards that are available for bidding uh, that in the next Thursday. And then the weekends are for mail days and then for interesting little videos as well. So uh, at least seven videos a week. You've got my word. I've done it for two and a half years. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but that's why I tell people I may not be the best content creator in the sports card hobby, but I am definitely the most consistent content creator in the sports card hobby. Thank you guys for sticking with me this long. This video is a 50 minute video. It had to be. There was just a lot of really good stuff that went. Sorry it was so Jordan centric, but not my problem. When somebody puts a bunch of 9.5s in there that never sell, that you never see, that break records, we got to talk about it. It just is what it is. So we've seen that with Kobe before, and we'll see it with LeBron one day. I truly believe that. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. I hope you have a great week in and out of the hobby, and peace.